Hazreti Resul Ekrem ve Nebi Muhterem sallallahu teala aleyhi ve sellem Efendimiz Hazretlerin aziz pak münevver mutahar ruh şeriflerine salavat-ı şerife getirenlerin ahir ve akıbetleri hayır ola. Ala azvacı tahirat evladı Resulü ashab-ı güzel efendilerimizin seyren bir azam ve Resul-i kiram hazıratının erbah şeriflerine birimiz Bilal-i Habeşi radıyallahu anh efendimizin mihmendar-ı Resul-i kibriya Eyüp Sultan Halid bin Ebu Zeyd Ebu Ansari radıyallahu anh Şah Murşid-i Anşah Hacı Muhammed Buhadi Nakşibendi Bukhari Mevlana Celaleddin Rumu Mevlana Ziyadeddin Halil Bağdadi Sahib-ı Zaman Kıbrat-ül İslam Şeyh Mevlana Muhammed Nazım Adil Hakani Sahibu Seyf, Şeyh Abdülkerim Kıbrıs-i Rabbani Kadı Salı Asrarım Hazıran Ervahi için Hadım-ı Harameyn-i Şerifen Yavu Sultan Selim Han, Ebel Fatih El-Magazi Fatih Sultan Mehmet Han ve Serdar-ı Hakan Sultan Abdülhamid Han Cennet Mekan Fedavsi Aşen Hazıran Ervahi'ni ve Avni enayetini Alal husus bu caminin bayinesi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş İmam Muazzin Kayyım Cemaatinin ve Kafi Ehli İmam Ervahi için Allah rızası için El-Fatiha أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد الله أكبر الله أكبر Allahu Ekber, Allahu Ekber. Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah. Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah. Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah. Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah. Hay ala salam. Hay ala salam Hay ala al falah Hay ala al falah Allahu ekber Allahu ekber la ilaha illa Allah la ilaha illa Allah sayyidina Muhammedur resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem Elhamdülillah elhamdülillah Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin Ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain Nehmedullah Ta'ala ve nasafir aşeru en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah Neşhedü enne seyyidina Muhammeden abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluhu Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zvacihi ve ashabi tabi khulafi rahşin mahadim min ba'di Ve zerrin mette ala tahkik ve zerrin minhum ala limiti khulafi rasulina ala tahkik Umar al-Mu'minin Hazreti Ebu Bakr, Umar Usman ve Ali وعلى بهج صاحب التابين رضوان الله عليه مجمعين يا أيها المؤمنون الحاضرون اتقوا الله تعالى تئن الله حمل الذين تكوا الذين هم محسنون الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على إشرف الأنبياء المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises are due to Allah Lord of the universes All praises are due to Allah Al Rahman Al Rahim مالك يوم الدين all praises are due to Allah who says in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Isra, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and say, My Lord, make me enter a rightful entrance, and make me exit a rightful exit, and give me from your presence a sustaining power, and say, Haq has come, and battle has perished, for truly, Battle is surely bound to perish. And we reveal of the Qur'an that which is a healing and a mercy for believers. But it does not increase the zalimin except in loss. And when we make life pleasant unto man, he turns away and distances himself. And when some evil touches him, he is in total despair. Say, each works according to his own manner. But your Lord is most knowing of him whose way is right. They are asking you, Ya Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about the Ruh. Say, the Ruh is by command of my Lord, and you are not given from the knowledge but a little. And if we willed, 
we could withdraw that which we revealed unto you, then you would find no guardian for you against us in this matter. Except we have left it with you as a mercy from your Lord. Truly, his kindness unto you was ever great. And may all peace and blessings be on the Sultan of the Messengers, Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi The Holy Prophet alayhi said, He who reads Salawat once, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow upon him ten blessings. He who reads the Salawat ten times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow upon him a hundred blessings. He who reads the Salawats one hundred times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses him a thousand times. He who reads the Salawat a thousand times. On the day of Qiyamah, at the door of Jannah, we will be so close that this person's shoulders will touch mine. May peace and blessings be upon him, his noble family, his blessed companions, especially upon the Fakhullah Fa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Omar Farooq, Hazrat Osman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. May peace and blessings be upon the noble Mashaykh of this Naqshbandi way, the defenders of Haq. May peace and blessings be upon the Ottoman Sultans, the Haqqani Sultans, who brought forth Haq and made Batil to perish. May Allah love those who love them. May Allah curse those who hate them. May Allah cause Haq to prevail. May Allah cause Batil to perish. Amen. Ya ayuhal mu'minun, O believers, Alhamdulillah to our Allah, who led us to reach to the third Juma of Ramazan al Karim. We have entered into the last ten nights of this holy month. It is a time for the believers to be vigilant and spend their days in obedience and their nights searching for Laylatul Qadr. The Holy Prophet wasalam, said, Whoever fasted the month of Ramazan out of sincere faith and hoping for a reward from Allah, then all his past sins will be forgiven and whoever stood for the prayers in the night of Qadr out of sincere faith and hoping for a reward from Allah, then all his previous sins will be forgiven. And he, alayhi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, said, search for the night of Qadr in the odd nights of the last 10 days of Ramazan. And our mother, Hazrat Aisha, is telling us, radiallahu anha, with the start of the last 10 days of Ramazan, the Prophet wasalam, used to tighten his belt and used to pray all the night and used to keep his family awake for the prayers. May we follow his sunnah, the sunnah of our masters, and spend the remaining time of Ramazan with our belts tightened, running in the way of Allah, inshallah. O oh, believers, what is the reason that we are here? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send us to this world? Our hearts know themselves that we are not here to live like animals to eat to drink to have children and then to die we know that we are not created for this dunya this lying dunya this yalan dunya we have said the shahadat and so as those who are claiming to have belief we have to know why are we here what does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what does he want from us it must be clear, we are here to establish the truth, the haq. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning in the ayats we read at the beginning of the khutbah, in Tafsir al-Jalalain, Imam Jalaluddin Suyuti radiallahu an says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Holy Prophet wasalam, to say this ayat, truth has come and falsehood has perished, for truly falsehood is ever bound to perish when he wasalam, entered Mecca at the time of Fatin Mecca. When the Holy Prophet entered the Holy Kaaba, he saw the 360 idols all around. And he started breaking the idols with his staff, repeating the ayat, Haq has come and battle has perished until they were all knocked down. We must put that situation in front of our eyes. The grandson of Hazrat Ibrahim Halilullah, alayhi salam, who broke the idols of the temple is coming to the Baytullah, built by his grandfathers, knocking down the idols that surround it. What do the idols represent? The idols do not exist. 
There are no ilahs except for Allah, but they represent something. They represent battle. They represent falsehood. They represent tyranny. They represent evil. They represent a society that was drowning in cruelty, in selfishness, in abusing others. A society that was founded upon everything other than Allah. And when the Holy Prophet والسلام, knocked down these idols and broke them just like his grandfather Ibrahim والسلام, he was declaring the end of battle and establishing haq on the earth. That was his mission. And that is still our mission. That is the mission that our Shaykh, Sahib al-Sayyib, Shaykh Abdul Karim al-Kabrisi al-Rabbani came to fulfill. That is the mission of our Grand Shaykh, Sultanul Awliya, Shaykh Maulana Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani, that he came to fulfill. And that is the mission of 40 Grand Shaykhs. He, Qadullah Sir, is speaking to us, Shaykh Afandi is, saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this job, this duty to man. Man must establish the Shariat again in this world. Man must open the Quran Karim. Man must work to bring the Halifa. And man must open the flag of the Holy Prophet. It's not going to come from the sky. It's going to come from these men that are living today on earth. We are all responsible. In the judgment day, we will all be questioned. And Allah will ask us, What have you done to bring the Hilafat back and to put my laws back on? What did you do? What did you do? Everyone will be questioned according to their level and according to their station. And Sahib al Sahib speaks the truth. This is why we are here. Wake up, O oh, Murids. This is why we are here. As our Shaykh taught us to recite in that beautiful poem, we came from the kingdom of the everlasting world to this dunya to leave with shahadat. Whether by horse or by foot, we came to bring down battle. We came to throw back everything other than Allah. We came to sell our lives for haq. We came to taste the pleasure of shahadat. We came to add power to haq. We came to establish the hilafat. We came to bear witness to haq. We came to be adorned with the barakat of the Quran, to be filled with its nur. We came to stand in the presence of Allah and be burned by His love. We came to establish the dawlat of Muhammad We came to believe with a passion. We came to turn over the false scales. We came to stand up to zulm. We came to extinguish the fire of shirk. We came to reach to union. We came to light the torches of Nur. We came to wear the crown of paradises. We came to look at the beauty of Haq. We came to melt into Kawsar. We came to cut the kaftan of Shahadat. We came to pass from this mortal life. We came to drink from the river of Kawsar. We came to choose the pleasure of Allah. Yes, this is why we are here. This is why the Holy Prophet ﷺ came. This is what Hazrat Abu Bakr was living for. For what Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Osman, Hazrat Ali was living for. This is what the Khalifas were living for. This is what the normal Muslims were living for. Everything they did from their prayer to their work to their fasting to their charity, it was all under the priority of working to establish the haq on the face of the earth. And our forefathers, the holy Ottomans, they were singing this every day. They were living, they were eating, they were sleeping, they were dreaming this every single day. But we, their descendants, where are we? What is our life and what is our dreams? Muslims of the 21st century cannot even imagine to say these words. 
we must make farq. We must make distinction between haq and batil. They asked Hazrat Umar radiallahu an how he was granted the name of Taruk. He radiallahu an said that after he accepted Islam at the hands of Rasulullah wasalam, he asked the Holy Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, if we proclaim our faith in the open, wouldn't we be on the truth regardless of whether we live or die? Holy Prophet answered, Indeed, I swear by him in whose presence my soul stands that you are on truth whether you live or die. Hazrat Umar then said, Why hide then? I swear by him who sent you with haq that this must be declared openly. Hazrat Umar tells us, we then walked out of the Darul Arqam in two rows, and Rasulullah walked steadily between Hamza and myself in the front row until we reached the Haram Sharif. The people of Quraysh became shocked and distressed as they saw us. And on that day, Rasulullah named me Al Faruq. Understand at this time, Hazrat Umar. He had just entered Islam. He had not even had a chance yet to offer namaz or to fast or to give zakat. But immediately his heart, his spirit, it is burning him saying, this is haq. We must go out and stand up for haq. And in those first moments of his standing with iman, he was granted a title from the heavens. al Faruk. may his spirit be with us. May his courage be with us. May his vision be with us. May his feet be on our necks. The Ottoman Sultans continued that tradition of Faruq Azam. They came to establish that. They established a Haqqani empire, an empire that was busy with standing up for justice everywhere and for crushing tyranny anywhere it rose its head. That is why in the end, all of the forces of evil, they all had to come together to bring down that Hilafat. Because as long as it was in this world, there was no chance for battle. Because the Ottomans were representatives of Haq. They made battle to perish in every moment, in every place. That Ottoman Empire is now veiled. So what is our place in this divine work now? In this Ramazan, maybe we fasted, maybe we prayed some extra records, maybe we gave some money. But what did we do to make haq to rise and to make battle to perish? And as our Shaykh is saying, Allah is going to ask us on the day of judgment what we did to be part of that work. We might be the weakest ones. But even in that weakest state, he is going to ask what we did. And what face will we have to show to our Lord if we did nothing? What face will we have to show to our Lord that our Sheikh is Sahibul Saif and our Grand Sheikh is Sultanul Awliya, and all that we were busy with is Dunya and Malayani. All that occupies our heart, that makes us to be passionate, is the lies of this world. Even an ant. That ant who carried a drop of water in its mouth to put out the fire of battle and to save Halilu Rahman. Even that ant was praised by Allah. We must ask ourselves this question every day. Make it alive. We must think. We must think. We must think of that day when we have to answer to our Lord. Even if we can do nothing, but make that intention to live for haq and to live to make the battle to fall every single day. Don't let it, don't let that fire to die. Alhamdulillah that we are following a shaykh because that shaykh, that sahib al sahib he spent his life living that, thinking and planning and putting plans into action for the sake of establishing haq for the sake of establishing the Ottoman Empire. This Darga where we are sitting, it is a headquarters for bringing Haq and to bring down Batil. And it is established to do the work of the Holy Prophet 
and to bring peace and relief to the heart of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. So many shaitans will attack. So many shaitans are going to attack. So many betrayers and traitors will continue to attack, but we must carry on. Our master is saying, we as Osman al-Naqshbandis, especially in this part of the world and on top of this mountain, we have another thing to be thankful to our Lord. Don't forget that in this part of the world, there was not a single man saying Allah. Alhamdulillah, with the help, guidance and blessings of our Shaykh, we built a masjid here. And in a few years' time, people were coming here from different parts of the world. We didn't give invitation to anyone. Something is happening, meaning Allah is bringing them here. You all came here from different parts of the world. You are all here. We are sitting here. We're intending to make a masjid here that will go on continuously until Judgment Day, inshallah, Rahman. For the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be continuously remembered and for five times azan to be called from the top of this mountain. This is bringing another opening to my heart. There was a time once when Holy Prophet ﷺ was old and tired and he was coming from a war. All his clothes were in dust. He entered into his masjid and he prayed two rakats. He seemed very tired. He was getting old. Hazrat Fatima ran to him and said, Oh my father, when is this suffering that you are going through, when is this going to end? He ﷺ said, Oh, Fatima, do you see that sun? She said, yes, my father. He, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, the light of Islam is like that sun. If it's not entering into every house in this world, then my suffering is not going to end. And he said, I'm not going to live that long, but I'm going to have inheritors living in this world. They are going to carry this message to different parts of the world and they are going to bring Islam to different houses in this world. So be happy. We should be happy. Every one of you and every one of those people who are doing this kind of work should be happy. That is a message given through Holy Prophet ﷺ saying it is going to be those ones bringing that message to every house in this universe. It is our aim, inshallah, that from every house at least one person should become Muslim, inshallah, Rahman. From each house, one person should accept Islam, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give our shaykh long and strong life, inshallah. He did that job. We are not doing it. He is the one who did it. He reached to east and west, north and south. We are just a tool here. He reached here, he reached here, he reached to Alaska, he reached to Siberia, he reached to Africa, he reached to Australia, and he reached to every part of the world. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. That is also enough open miracle for us to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. Oh believers, we are in that work. We don't deserve to be, but we are in that work. The dua of our grandparents reached to us and we are here. Take it seriously and be thankful and understand. We are here to do the work of the prophets. We are here to make haq to rise. We are here to make battle to perish. We are here to make the light of Islam to enter into every house in the universe. Ourselves, by ourselves, we cannot do it, definitely. We are the weakest ones, but without shaykh, who is connected to the Holy Prophet والسلام, who is the beloved of his Lord, with Allah's support, we can do anything. Don't let your eyes to look so small. Make big intentions. Make great intentions. Once upon a time, Osman Ghazi was sitting in one yurt with a small group of people, but with his in great intention, a tree grew from his heart that gave shade to the whole world for 600 years. Make a great intention every day. Your Lord and my Lord is not stingy. With that intention and with that passion, He will send what we can't even imagine. Holy Prophet ﷺ was crying before the battle of Badr, saying to his Lord, Ya Allah, 
accomplish for me what you have promised to me. Ya Allah, bring about what you have promised to me. Ya Allah, if this small band of Muslims is destroyed, you will not be worshipped on this earth. And in the end, Allah revealed Suratul Nasr to his Habib, saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim When the help of Allah comes to you, Ya Muhammad wasalam, against your enemies and the conquest of Mecca, and you see that the people enter the deen of Allah in crowds, so glorify the praises of your Lord and ask for his forgiveness. Verily, he is the one who accepts the repentance and forgives. Sadaqallah Azim. And he established an empire that gave the rights to the weak, that brought justice to the oppressed, and that spread the shade of Allah across the earth. That shade has been missing for 100 years now. And without that shade, the world is on fire. And this fire will continue to burn until Judgment Day. In this Ramadan, we're asking Allah to bring that shade back. We're asking Allah to be part of that work. We're asking Allah to let us to be part of our Shaykh's work who is looking at the road ahead, walking behind the Holy Prophet We are blessed to have Sultan al-Awliya, Shaykh Maulana Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani as our Grand Shaykh. And inshallah, his dua is upon us when he says, Mark today's date and start counting. May Allah show you also those happy days and grant you honor by making service in those days. Oh, who listen to these words. O oh mankind, Ya Rabbi, Tawbah Ya Rabbi, Tawbah Ya Rabbi, Tawbah Astaghfirullah. Shukur Ya Rabbi, Shukur Ya Rabbi, Shukur Alhamdulillah. If you want, you can make the world upside down instantly. You can make the oceans overflow. You can open the heavens and with snows, with floods, you can sweep the world. You are Al Qadir. We are helpless, O oh Lord. May He subhanahu wa ta'ala show us the good days. May He show us Sayyidina Mahdi. May you see Hazrat Isa also. And may you find honor in doing hizmat to them and honoring them. My children, my grandchildren, the young ones of the nation of Muhammad والسلام, will inshallah ride horses under the flag of Islam. We don't want any cannon or planes. The majestic voice of our takbir will shake the world. It is coming. Islam is coming. Shaitan Sultanate will be destroyed and the Sultan that our Rahman appointed will rule this world. We believe and we hope that we can be with them too. Amin. Amin. Amin. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Lazim. Lazim. La ilaha illa wa ilaha لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له النور وحمد كل شيء كثير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك أنت المظالم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك أنت المظالم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك سبحان كروس ربنا رب الملائكة تبارك سبحان كروس ربنا رب سبحان كروس ربنا رب إن دينا